the Vikings game is a benchmark type game. Like even through two games, you know that they're a team that can score points. You know that they're a team that has a physical offensive line. If you want to prove to the fan base, to yourselves, to the organization, that things really are yeah. different here, go beat the Vikings. No one expects the Detroit Lions to win this game. They hope that they win this game. Yes. You got to change that mindset. Here's a question I wanted to talk to you about, Bray. Amani Oruwarie is, is back. most likely going to come back. How easy or how difficult is it? Because you obviously want to put Justin, uh, excuse me, Jeff, Jeff Okuda in a good spot. Yeah. You obviously don't want to put Amani Oruwarie in a, bad, in a spot. bad spot coming back from injury. What is the decision there on who to put on who? And conversely, as a wide receiver, I mean, are you, is an offensive coordinator looking for matchups? I mean, when the New York Jets play the, the, the New England Patriots, are they sticking Braylon Edwards on the left side against uh, cornerback one? Or I know yeah. I can get Braylon Edwards over on the right side. Um, that gives me an advantage if we put him over there. How does that work in the NFL and uh, potentially what, what Aaron Glenn is deciding upon for Sunday? doesn't matter who you put on Braylon Edwards. Just let you know that <laughs> Braylon Edwards is getting Truth. open. Brother, that was just getting over. Now I'm already talking in the third person. Uh, no, uh, it does. You know, you, you got a guy that's just coming back from injury. Even though Armani Arborari was your best defensive back in the last couple of years, he's just coming back off injury. Now we believe him to be hurt, but it's not necessarily about him being injured. It's about him coming back and getting into rhythm. It's about him, you know, it's something about game tape. I told you, it's, it's different when you're practicing. It's different when you're going through the motions than actually being on the field. So getting into that game shape, getting into the rhythm of the season and the game. I keep Jeff Okuda on Justin Jefferson. Yeah. I match him up in man-to-man -man coverage. Obviously, when you're switching side, when it's two-man or when it's four zone, it's quarters, you don't need to match him like that. But when it's man-to-man, -man, when you decide to go one high safety, I'm matching Jeff Okuda and Justin Jefferson. I don't want to put Armani over Rarier in that position. And it's not about his skill, because I've always been high on him, even when he was at Penn State. It's not about his skill. It's about him getting into the flow of the season. It takes some time to get in that flow. And this is game three. For everybody else on the Minnesota Vikings team, this is only game one for the money. No doubt about it. And again, Maz, we, we talk so much about we, we're going to learn a lot about the Lions. And I think Lomas uh, and Braylon, two Big guys Lone. that have played the game, right? I mean, they look for that first quarter of games, yep. that, that first four games to see what a team is really made of. But I do think we are going to learn something about the Detroit Lions as they go on the road for the first time this season and play a team that many people believe is going to be the division winners in the NFC North. Hey, it's a division game. It's always going to be tough. These two teams, they go at it. Yeah, the Vikings own the Lions on the, uh, of course, the all-time series. Everyone does. Two to one. Two to one. I mean, they've always owned them. But the Lions play them hard. And last year, they could have swept both games against the Purple Gang. So I'm looking forward to another game like last year, going down to the wire and let the best team win it. And I think it could be the Lions. I like the way that spread is going down. Five uh, and a half now, so people yep, are pointing out Ve on the I mean, account. Vegas knows. I'm telling you, what, just play well. Play tough. That's all we could ask of you. If you get in the playoffs, it's icing on the cake. Yeah, the big thing that when, with Big Loam and I say when I big say, when I say Big Loam, I'm talking about Lomas out there for you guys, uh, is in football traditionally you want to see through four quarters. You know what I'm saying? Where you are. You can assess teams through quarters. Obviously, first four games, that's a quarter, et cetera, et cetera. Now they're at 17 games, so it's you know a little different. But you're gonna find out a lot, you already know a lot about the Detroit line. Like even through two games, you know that they're a team that can score points. You know that they're a team that has a physical offensive line. You know that their linebacker play has been pretty good thus far. You know that DeAndre Swift is a genuine, genuine article. You know that Jeff Okuda is back, is ready, is ready to take over in that role. So you know some things. But it doesn't take four games necessarily. That's just usually the benchmark. You don't want to get too excited too early. But you know a lot already. The Vikings game is a benchmark type game. The Vikings game on the road against a team that many have to win the division. A lot of people have to go far into the NFC playoffs. Like getting that team on the road after they just lost to a Philly team that you looked a lot better. You can tell a lot about the Detroit Lions after this game is over. How did they handle Justin Jefferson? How did they, how did they handle, Kirk, handle and corral Kirk Cousins? What did the defense side of the ball do for the Detroit Lions? Did the linebacker play continue? And on the offensive side, is Jared Goff looking better from week two to week three? Is DeAndre Swift going to be good? The wide receivers, was there a DJ Chark signing? 
T.J. Hawkinson, is he stepping up? You're talking about a guy that made the Pro Bowl two years ago. So you can tell a lot after this Vikings game. I pretty much think you're going to know who the Detroit Lions are after this game. Watch out for Irv Smith Jr. too. They started to use him last week. The tight end always got the Lions in the You put him in my in fantasy past. team. I picked him up for Braylon. Thank you, GM. He didn't start him, though. He started Friar Muth last night. Disappointing. Yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> you're the GM. You were supposed to tell me. Hey, coach. My bad. My bad. We both dropped the ball. <laughs> Watch out for Irv. I do want to make this point, uh, and I'll agree with you, Bray, and i got to disagree with you, Maz. I'm tired of them playing tough. I'm tired of them just hanging in there. That's all we can ask for. If you want to be a different version of the Detroit Lions, go be a to different Minneapolis version. and win this game. Yeah. Nobody expects Detroit to win because I think, really, we are all stuck in the same old way of thinking when it comes to this football team. Yeah, they'll beat Seattle at home, probably, but they'll go on the road and lose to Minnesota because Minnesota is a good football team and the Lions don't beat good football teams on the road. If you want to do something different here in Detroit, if you want to prove to the fan base, to yourselves, to the organization, that things really are yeah. different here in Detroit in 2022, go beat the Vikings. You use a perfect word in that in, in your in your eloquent sentence about being different. You want to do something different, then go ahead and do it. You use expect. You use we don't expect the Detroit Lions to win this game. No one expects specs the Detroit Lions win this game they hope that they win this game yes. you got to change that mindset you got to start expecting to win games like this if you ultimately want to be a different team if you want to actually say we're no longer the SOL the same old Lions we have a new identity we have a new culture here administered by Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes then you got to expect to win these games the reason why we expect to win against the Minnesota Vikings is because they're a fraudulent team we know we can get to Kirk Cousins we know we can corral them and confuse them a little bit we know that that defense has struggled in the secondary for the last three years that's why Zimmer's tenure is now over partly because of that defense and mostly because of the secondary in that defense if you want to start expecting to win, then those are the kind of conversations that you got to have with yourself as well to us in the media and analysts. I mean, how many people, Matt, when you get that schedule at the beginning of the year, you look week three at Minnesota, I guarantee you 90% of Lions fans said loss. I have them splitting. I did have them losing at Minnesota, <laughs> but winning at home. <laughs> there you go. I do. Yeah. That's the point, I do. right? I, I have mean, them splitting at, almost every year in the division, right, three and three. Right. At, That's what I got. At Minnesota, loss. loss. Buffalo, loss. Yeah. At uh, Green Bay, loss. But, loss. But, At Dallas, loss. At New England, loss. I mean, yeah. uh, go go win three of those games. Why but, not? You know? But that's when you exp that's when you hope, and that's when you're excited to see can they change that culture. Because when you see teams, if I'm like, let's, let's say we're a good football team. Let's say for the, the purpose of this drill, the Detroit Lions are, i.e., I don't know, let's say the Rams. Let's say that the Rams right now for this purpose of this exercise. If the Rams are looking at Green Bay, they're like, Man, Aaron Rodgers can't seem to find his wide receivers. I don't know who's playing wide receiver. The running game for Green Bay hasn't really got going yet. We expect to beat them. The Minnesota Vikings, I saw what they did week one, but I saw what they did in week two, and I believe that's the truer Minnesota Vikings. They won't run the ball with Dalvin Cook. Kirk Cousins will give you the ball if you put pressure in his face, if you get him to play a game where he has to beat you with the pass. The, the defense isn't there. I expect to win that game, too. That's how you change the narrative. That's how positive teams, teams that are good, that's how they look at those situations. The Lions are still finding themselves, but they got to find themselves fast. Bray, they played the Philadelphia Eagles in Philly on a Monday night. I think you throw that game, not throw it out, but I think they're between game one and game two somewhere in the middle. I don't think you saw the real Vikings last week. I truly don't. I just think the Eagles are better. It, I, I understand that, but if you're going to tell me that this team has a chance to go to the NFC Championship, if you're going to tell me that this is one of the best teams in the NFC, top three, then I don't want to hear excuses about going on the road early in the season. You got a quarterback that you're paying $40 million to. You got the best receiver in football. Dalvin Cook was the best full total running back in the game three years ago. Adam Thielen was the best assistant wide receiver in the game three years ago. You're telling me you got Zadaria Smith from Green Bay to go alongside of Daniil Hunter? Like, you're telling me that? I don't want to hear any excuses about that was Philly in Philly. If you're that good of a ball club, then you go to Philly and you beat Philly. Or you go to Philly and you look decent. You don't go to Philly and drop a turd. They didn't score a point in the second half.